We begin with a discussion of normal endocrine processes. We begin with a review of the adrenal gland. The adrenal gland can be divided into the adrenal cortex, derived from mesoderm, and the adrenal medulla, derived from the neural crest. The cortex can be further divided into three zones. The zona glomerulosa, which is activated by the renin angiotensin system to secrete mineralocorticosteroids such as aldosterone. The second area is the zona fasciculata, and the third is the zona reticularis, both of which are under the control of ACTH and hypothalamic CRH, and both release sex hormones. The medulla is made up of chromaffin cells that are innervated by preganglionic sympathetic fibers and release catecholamines such as epinephrine. The adrenal glands receive blood from three sources. One, the inferior phrenic artery, two, the abdominal aorta, and three, the renal artery. Venous drainage varies by side, with the left gland draining into the inferior phrenic vein, and the right gland draining into the inferior vena cava. The pituitary gland can be divided into the posterior and anterior segments, each of which carries out its own function. The posterior pituitary releases neurohypophysial hormones, including vasopressin and oxytocin, that are made in the hypothalamus and transported to the pituitary from where they are released. With the exception of prolactin, the anterior pituitary releases adenohypophysial hormones, including FSH, LH, ACTH, GH, and TSH. The function of the anterior pituitary is under regulation by the hypothalamus, and anterior pituitary hormone release is under feedback regulation by peripheral hormone levels. The hormones released by the anterior pituitary contain an alpha subunit that is common to TSH, LH, FSH, and HCG, and a beta subunit that is specific to each hormone. The pulsatile release of hypothalamic, pituitary, and target organ hormones plays an important role in endocrine function. Now let's take a look at the endocrine cells of the pancreas. The pancreatic cells function as a glucose sensor and release hormones to regulate the blood glucose levels. The endocrine cells of the pancreas are known as the islets of Langerhans that are collections of alpha, beta, and delta endocrine cells. The islets arise from the pancreatic buds. Let's take a closer look at the cells that make up the islets of Langerhans. Alpha cells release glucagon, a hormone that antagonizes the effect of insulin by stimulating the hepatic release of glucose. Beta cells release insulin that is under nutrient, neural, and hormonal regulation. The PI3 kinase pathway mediates most of insulin's metabolic effects, and the MAPK pathway is mostly involved in mediating the proliferative responses. The principal metabolic effects of insulin are to increase glucose utilization in skeletal muscle, suppress hepatic glucose production, and inhibit lipolysis. 
A disruption in the balance of insulin and glucagon leads to ketogenesis and hyperosmolar coma. Finally, it is the delta cells that release somatostatin. Next, let's review the actions of specific hormones within the endocrine system. Prolactin increases dopamine synthesis and secretion from the hypothalamus. By negative feedback, dopamine subsequently inhibits prolactin secretion. Clinically, dopamine agonists such as bromocryptine can therefore be used to inhibit the secretion of prolactin, whereas the antagonists, including most antipsychotics, stimulate the secretion of prolactin. In females, prolactin inhibits GnRH synthesis and release, which has an inhibitory effect on ovulation. Amenorrhea is commonly seen in patients suffering from prolactinoma. As we have already discussed, the hypothalamus and pituitary regulate the release of hormones through various feedback mechanisms. Let's summarize the common ones. Thyroid hormones. The hypothalamus secretes thyrotrophin-releasing hormone, or TRH, that stimulates the anterior pituitary to release thyroid-stimulating hormone, TSH, and prolactin. TSH stimulates the release of thyroid hormone from the thyroid gland. The release of thyroid hormone has a negative feedback effect on the anterior pituitary. Prolactin. As previously mentioned, dopamine has a negative effect on the release of prolactin. Adrenocorticotrophic hormone, or ACH. Corticotrophin releasing hormone stimulates the release of adrenocorticotrophic hormone from the pituitary. Growth hormone releasing hormone secreted by the hypothalamus results in the release of growth hormone from the pituitary. Somatostatin inhibits the release of growth hormone and TSH. And gonadotrophin releasing hormone or GnRH, stimulates the release of FSH and LH. The adrenal gland synthesizes a number of steroids, including mineralocorticoids from the glomerulosa, glucocorticoids from the fasciculata, androgens from the reticularis, and estrogens from the periphery. Parathyroid hormone is secreted by the chief cells of the parathyroid. Its release is under negative feedback regulation by calcium and vitamin D. The main physiologic effects of PTH are mediated by the PTHR1 expressed in bone and kidney. PTHR1 binds PTH and PTHRP, a peptide responsible for the pathophysiologic elevation of calcium in submalignancies. In the kidney, PTH increases renal calcium reabsorption and increases the activity of 1-hydroxylase, which mediates the final activation step in the synthesis of vitamin D and also decreases PI reabsorption. In the bone, PTH increases osteoclast-mediated bone resorption indirectly through the stimulation of osteoblast activity. Vitamin D increases bone resorption, renal calcium reabsorption, and intestinal calcium absorption. Vitamin D3 is absorbed from the sun by the skin, and vitamin D2 is ingested from plants. Both of these are converted to active vitamin D, which involves hydroxylation in the liver and the kidney. 
the production of 1,2,5-OH2 vitamin D is increased with increased parathyroid hormone, decreased calcium, and decreased phosphate. Rickets in children and osteomalacia in adults are caused by a deficiency of vitamin D. Calcitonin decreases bone resorption and lowers plasma calcium levels. It is released by the parafollicular cells of the thyroid. Steroid and thyroid hormones exert their effects in a similar way. The hormone binds to a receptor on the nucleus or cytoplasm. This results in the transformation to expose the DNA binding domain. Binding to an enhancer-like element in the DNA leads to gene transcription and protein synthesis. Due to this mechanism, the effect is not instantly observed. It is useful to note that steroid hormones are lipophilic and relatively insoluble in plasma. They therefore must circulate bound to specific lobulins that increase the solubility and hence allows for the increased delivery of the steroid to the target organ. In addition to being a great target for drug action, this property has a clinical significance. Increasing the levels of sex hormone binding globulin, or SHBG, lowers free cholesterol resulting in gynecomastia in men. Decreasing SHBG raises free testosterone, resulting in hirsutism. The thyroid gland is regulated by the hypothalamic pituitary thyroid axis. Dietary iodine is required for thyroid hormone synthesis. The thyroid gland produces thyroid hormones through a process of concentration of iodine in the thyroid, iodination of tyrosine residues of thyroglobulin in the colloid space of the follicle, and endocytosis of colloid followed by proteolytic release of thyroid hormones T4 and T3. Thyroid hormones undergo metabolism in peripheral tissues, leading to the production of the more active T3 and deactivation of thyroid hormones. The presence of D-iodinases and their substrate specificity play a central role in thyroid hormone function in target tissues. Thyroid hormone receptors are located intracellularly, bound to DNA, and alter gene transcription upon binding by thyroid hormone. Thyroid hormone actions are systemic and vital for development, growth, and metabolism. Various organs are dependent upon insulin for their normal functioning. For example, Skeletal muscle and adipose tissue depend upon insulin for increased glucose uptake. Conversely, brain cells and erythrocytes take up glucose independent of insulin levels. Cortisol is released by the adrenal fasciculata bound to corticosteroid binding globulin. Cortisol has anti-inflammatory properties, increases gluconeogenesis, lipolysis, proteolysis, decreases immune function, maintains blood pressure, and decreases bone formation. Its release is regulated by a negative feedback mechanism through CRH and ACTH. Hormones, cytokines, interleukins, and growth factors use a variety of signaling mechanisms to facilitate cellular adaptive responses. Class II hormones, 
which bind to cell surface receptors, generate a variety of intracellular signals. These include cyclic AMP, cyclic GMP, calcium, phosphatidyl inositides, and protein kinase cascades. Many hormone responses are accomplished through alterations in the rate of transcription of specific genes.